Hey everyone, this is Jay, also known as Jay Nemesis, over on eToro.com, where I trade as a popular investor. This is our weekly update for week 45 of 2018. Our top news this week, AMD hosted their Next Horizon event. Uh, obviously, they hosted the New Horizon event back in, I think it was 2016. Uh, this event I was pretty excited about. Uh, I had seen a lot of rumors, especially from Adored T TV, who uh, I've probably given shout outs to quite a lot but again he proved himself correct uh, with his predictions on what uh, specs effectively were going to be announced for their latest cpus for epic uh, the event was basically used to launch uh, new projects and kind of show off uh, the direction which amd is going um, specifically their seven nanometer stuff for both gpus and cpus so the GPU stuff was nothing super exciting. You know, it's pretty much what we expected. It's uh, perhaps not as great as NVIDIA's stuff, but it's still pretty decent. And I think it's important for AMD to kind of keep exposure to that market. The CPU stuff is where things were more interesting. So uh, over on Adore TV, which is a guy that I've talked about a lot, as I said, um, he predicted that AMD were moving towards a chiplet design for their CPUs. Now, obviously, Intel went with a slightly different tactic, and they kind of stitched together their CPUs. But it basically, what happened is AMD have realized the difficulties with scaling down some some parts of the CPU, essentially. And so they've kept those parts on 14 nanometer, and then they've scaled down um, some of the other areas of the CPU into 7 nanometers, which is actually operated around the chip. So you have the 14 nanometer meter chip which is actually communicating and doing a bunch of the work for the seven nanometer chips which are actually taking on the heavy load so this is um a pretty pretty new style of cpu but this is exactly what uh was predicted um the performance is pretty insane they actually benched it against an intel against two intel cpus and it still won against two of them um which is pretty cool uh adore tv did release a video afterwards suggesting that he thinks that basically it's game over for intel uh the final words from lisa sue at the end of the event were pretty much the effect of we're here to stay and uh and we're here to lead um so I'm pretty excited about this product, and I really think that AMD have got a very strong advantage now in CPUs over Intel. So I'm looking forward to next year. Um, I did some great trading in and around the event, but uh, I think the long-term vision for AMD looks very, very good, and I could actually see us potentially hitting somewhere around AMD's previous all-time high, not just the recent high, but all-time high next year if the market conditions are right for it. Next up, earnings season continues. So obviously, uh, the two big earnings that really affected us this week were Activision Blizzard and Etsy, specifically Etsy. Etsy went very, very, very well. I was very happy with the results that we saw from them. Uh, effectively, around 15% uh, or so uh, price increase. It was one of our larger positions, so we've benefited from that quite a lot. On top of that, I actually traded it pretty actively. Um, I still think Etsy's got a decent future ahead of it, although I would say that um, potentially after after that quarter, it's going to be difficult for them to kind of see those kind of jumps again in in the near future. But certainly, I'm I'm still very bullish on Etsy for the long term. Over at Activision, obviously, we've just had the big Diablo fiasco that's been going on over the past week or so uh, uh, around BlizzCon. But despite that, I saw some very interesting underlying strengths in. Uh, Activision's earnings call. Investors were, of course, panicked because they saw a slight decline in users, and you know they they call that the Fortnite effect. Personally, as someone who's who plays games, I don't see that really being the driving force between declining users. I see it being the fact that Blizzard hasn't, apart from Activision Blizzard, apart from Destiny 2, really hasn't uh, done very much this year in terms of big product launches. They are working on Diablo 4. They are working on some other big PC titles. Obviously, Overwatch is doing well. But for the moment, it's just a little bit quiet. And, and I think that's probably why we saw a slight decline in users. That being said, I do think the mobile stuff is going to go very well. And the, the thing that I picked out from the earnings report that I found interesting was how much the Overwatch League had overperformed expectations. So I think that's, um, that's definitely a strength that Activision Blizzard have ahead of most other competitors in the gaming industry right now. Obviously, uh, like I did the other week, I will be writing up a big report with uh, all of the earnings that I've not discussed yet over on my blog on jnemesis.com if you want to find out more. That should be out towards the end of this week. Next up, it's back to Bitcoin Cash again. So obviously, I spoke about this at length last week, so I'm not going to dig into it too much. But effectively, the drama is 
effectively escalating. We saw Roger Ver posting a video onto YouTube where uh, Craig Craig Wright basically uh, called him out and said that it's now all out war, um, and that it's gonna he's gonna find out what it's like to be uh, to be an enemy. Um, which is pretty immature. Uh, I actually did tweet about this earlier. I, effectively, it feels to me like there's basically a bunch of billionaires just playing games right now. Um, Bitmain are now in a position where potentially they're in trouble because there was another interview with Craig Wright where he mentioned that most of the mining equipment that was sold by Jihan Wu and Bitmain was to him and his company and others that are effectively aligned with his interests. So that means more hash power towards their... Um, their chain, which is Satoshi Vision, Satoshi's Vision chain. So all of this is, you know, building up to be something pretty chaotic, um, but certainly interesting, if nothing else. I'm very glad that I steered clear of this. I think it could end pretty badly for everything because even if uh, even if both chains survive and everyone kind of splits into their own groups, I don't think anyone's really going to trust those chains anymore because it seems clear to me now that there's just some bad actors in in this space and you know they they don't care about making a a blockchain that's really particularly good or useful what they seem to care about most of all is their own egos and their own uh their own appearance to the public and kind of being right and having their own blockchain effectively so the whole thing is very very messy um i think uh, you're well advised in my opinion to steer clear from bitcoin cash during this situation Final piece of news for this week, uh, EOS San Francisco Hackathon has taken place over the weekend. So as you guys probably know, EOS has hosted several hackathons in Hong Kong, Sydney, London, and now San Francisco. They're hosting the final over in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. The prize money for each one has been $100,000 for first place with a bunch of secondary prizes and more interesting prizes as well. Uh, this was the best attended event again. Um, so really interesting ideas that were kind of pitched. The challenge was to uh, build a project around um, incentivizing all different stakeholders uh, in an ecosystem effectively. So we saw some pretty interesting things around music. We saw uh, something around food stamps, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, there, there are a bunch of projects, some good, some bad, but certainly this seems to me like a very good sign that the EOS ecosystem and the DAP development that's going on is very, very healthy right now and that there's still a lot more to come than what we've seen currently on EOS. Our trading stats for this week, we have a portfolio change of plus 2.42% into the green, and we have a realized profit of plus 1.08%, which is actually pretty good for a week. In total, there were 36 trades closed, 34 of them were profitable, and two were unprofitable. Our most traded this week was AMD. Uh, just a small note on this as well is that I did manage to uh, avoid closing any positions over a 10% loss or even over a 5% loss. So this was really, really good week with some very, very active day trading, as you will find out as we head into our trading overview. So cryptos, not much to speak about here. There were no trades closed in crypto this week. Uh, this is partially due to, to my slightly changing style and also because the market appears to basically be at bottom at the moment. So there's really no reason to be closing anything. Um, I, I think the market is turning bullish, so I don't really plan on closing any crypto trades right now uh, unless I can see a good opportunity for a day trade. Um, that being said, we are still opening positions and I am obviously still paying quite a lot of attention to the crypto market, as you can see from the updates that I've been giving over the past few weeks. So the stock recap, uh, starting off with Snapchat, we had two shorts for 3.62% profit and 2.06% profit. I could have left these positions open a little, a little bit longer, to be honest. I knew that uh, Snapchat was likely to go down further. I had my suspicions that we would see uh, effectively a dead cat bounce in the NASDAQ and that we would see the NASDAQ trade lower. Uh, but I decided not to because the AMD stuff that was taking place during the uh, the uh, Horizon event was really, really interesting. And I just wanted more funds available to play around and try and uh, trade that actively. On that note, uh, 15 trades for AMD. As I said, my most traded 13 of those were profitable and uh, two of those were unprofitable, uh, resulting in a pretty pretty healthy profit. Uh, the smallest profit was 0.09%, so effectively that was stop loss. Uh, but we also had uh, trades up to 7.68% in the green and our, our two losing trades were 3.9% and 4.7%.
Activision Blizzard, as mentioned earlier, they had their earnings. Um, despite that, I didn't actually close any negative trades. I do have one position open that is slightly in the red that I was holding before their earnings. Uh, so two shorts um, in earlier in the week, which were basically uh, closed at uh, pre- more or less break even, 0.12 and 0.24% profit. Um, and we had a long position for 2% profit, which I believe is a position I took out following how far they had dropped after their earnings. On to Etsy, which uh, was almost our most traded for the week with 10 trades, which is pretty high for a stock. Um, all of these were profitable between 1% and 36.45%. Obviously, that 36% was opened way ahead of their earnings call. So some some nice a nice mixture of day trading and just taking profit after the earnings were announced. Very, very happy with how that's going. Still have some reasonable exposure there as well. So it's not like I've just cashed out everything and now we're potentially missing out on uh, the future potential of this company. We're still involved. Um, We've just taken a bit of money off the table for the time being. On to Apple and Microsoft. Both of these are kind of similar strategy for me. They're both quite resilient during bear markets. And so at first I was kind of planning to just open up a few positions here and keep them long term. But I kind of decided that actually, you know what, they're still going to go down a bit. So I want to just try and turn them into day trades. So that's more or less what I did. Uh, Apple 0.69% profit. And then on Microsoft, we had a 1.92% and a 1.17% profit which uh, again, you know, it's, it's not too bad um, considering that these are actually some of the more stable stocks on the NASDAQ right now. Next up, we have Intel. So two shorts here for 0.21 and 0.04% profit. Both of these were uh, stop losses, I believe. I did kind of mess them up a little bit. I was expecting Intel Intel stock price to react a lot more to the AMD event than it did. That being said, I also executed these pretty badly, as you can see. Um, Intel did go down by around 2% or so during the uh, during the event, but I didn't close them at that price, and they just kind of ended up getting stopped out at more or less break even. So not great, but uh, I don't really regret the decision. I think it was important not to put all of my eggs in the AMD basket during that event. Finally, last of all, we have Tesla with one trade for 2.22% profit. So jumping into our performance, you can see that uh, week 45 in terms of portfolio change wasn't quite so so strong as we saw in week 44, but we did manage to actually convert that into uh, realized profit, so that's good. Um, November on portfolio change, we're up by around 2.5%. In terms of realized trade, 0.86% for November so far, and 1%, uh, just over 1% for week 45 of realized profits. That means I closed those trades. So um, if you compare that to the past few uh, weeks and and months on the realized trade front especially, um, you can see that although it's not great, it's definitely a move in the right direction. On the weekly side of things, that was a pretty good week. Um, I would love if we could just repeat that for the rest of this year. It would actually see us, you know, do uh, do pretty well, actually, I think. Um, but realistically, we know that that's not likely to occur. I just need to try and keep up the momentum um, and continue looking for good opportunities. Uh, on a side note, I think... Um, Earnings-wise, this quarter, I have done, generally speaking, pretty well. I've been on the right side of almost every, all of the earnings calls um, and earnings reports that we've seen. The problem really has been that the market did turn against us um, basically as that as that period started. So we've still had some big winners like we did with Etsy. Um, but at the same time, if the market's going down, there's really not that much we can do because I, I still want to trade around those events because the potential there is uh, substantial. Um, and of course, we could easily have seen the market turn around based on the based off of the strong earnings that we saw across quite a lot of companies, including Microsoft and Amazon and all sorts. So what's coming up? Uh, we have a few remaining earnings calls to catch up on. Um, so we have NVIDIA and Wix. I believe Wix is tomorrow and NVIDIA is on Wednesday. I might, might be wrong on that. I need to double check. Um, but they're both basically midweek. Um, Both of those are positions that I don't care about too much. We don't have anything in NVIDIA because I think they're going to have reasonably weak earnings. Um, I I think that Wix, again, may not have the strongest earnings, but we do have a a bit of exposure there. And actually, they've been performing quite well over the past month or so. So um, who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us a bit, but I think uh, probably that's going to sit somewhere around about flat. 
Of course, once I have uh, gone through all of the earnings calls, I will be writing up my final thoughts on NVIDIA's, on Wix, Activision, uh, Etsy, Disney, all of these different companies. Um, I will be finishing them up, writing them down in a blog post and putting them up on the website, the same as I did with the first half of earnings effectively. So that one's already up. If you haven't read it, I do recommend reading it if you are interested in my thoughts on on how these companies are performing. Um, but this one probably will be released towards the end of the week because I just need a bit of time to actually go through and write my thoughts down for all of them. Of course, the other big thing that's happening this week that I mentioned previously is the Bitcoin Cash fork. So that's due to land on the 15th around midday um, in, in the UK and Europe, at least. I am, <laughs> as it says here, preparing some popcorn because I think there's potential for some pretty big fireworks here and some extreme volatility in the price of both Bitcoin and uh, a, a both Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, if that's what it ends up being called. Who knows? Because there is effectively a war over the hashing right now that is about to take place. So that's it from me for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. Please uh, feel free to leave comments on the YouTube video, on eToro, and of course on my Twitter. I know I haven't done a Twitch stream recently, but it's just been pretty busy recently. So uh, I do hope to do one soon. If, if you're actually um, really looking forward to me doing a twitch stream twitch stream please mention it to me because uh the more of you that ask for one the more likely i am to try and make sure that i do one um sometime sooner rather than later um it's a good good way to kind of ask me questions about my trading and and kind of see hands on how i'm doing things basically that's it for now uh thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time